Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's final session in our spring webinar series, Notes on a Post-it Research Data Management. My name is Megan Kowalski, and I am the Outreach and Reference Librarian. Thank you for attending today. This session is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube page later this afternoon, and all registrants will receive a recording plus a handout of resources mentioned in this webinar. We will have time for questions at the end, both recorded and unrecorded, but feel free to put your questions or comments in the chat at any time. So, is this you? Does this desk look like your desk? Does this office look like your office? If it does, if you recognize yourself, I know I recognize myself, that's common. Um, how, you know, much of your research is housed on post-it notes or in random notes on your phone. If you're a typical scholar, you probably have research all over the place. It's in folders, it's in files, it's online, it's in a journal, it's just all over the place. And today, what we're gonna do is look at research data management. And research data management is the general term that describes the organization, storage, preservation, and sharing of data collected and used in a research project. And so it would be impossible to cover all of the aspects of research data management in a single webinar. It is highly specific on the research area and subject matter, and it is also highly specific in, and depends on the kinds of data you are working with. So this webinar serves as an introduction, and as a reminder, the library is here to help you. We are not the only ones, though. The Office of Sponsored Programs is also here to help you with your research data management. And if you have a grant or funder, they might also be available to help you with a research data management plan. So going back to the parts of research data management, there are four main parts, organization, storage, preservation, and sharing. An organization is how things are saved and made searchable or browsable. Storage is where and how materials are stored, and this can be physical or digital, or it can be both if you've got a project that does both. Preservation is how are things made safe to last beyond this project into the future. Again, this can be physical and or digital, and it may be time bound or it may be indefinite. Some material is designed to disappear. Others needs to be maintained indefinitely. And finally, there is sharing. How are materials made shareable for collaborators, stakeholders, and others? The importance of research data management can't be understated. First, it helps you work. It can help you connect and find ideas within your own work. It is also important for time management, so you're not digging through trying to find something that you remember you did that one time. It is also important for error reduction. It reduces mistakes and reduces the risk of plagiarism because you'll have everything organized. And finally, it is often required by grants and funders. If you are spending someone else's money, they're going to have opinions about how you do that. So that means they're going to require you to organize information, save it, and share it within a specific way. It is also important for stability. Data and information are fragile and easily lost, and this is true for digital and physical, but it's incredibly important to remember that digital information is more fragile than physical information. And you want to avoid that dreaded 404 link or broken file. And so research data management is important for replication or reproducibility. It helps you share your steps with all your colleagues, and when it comes to peer review or replication, it allows other scholars in your field to try to replicate your results to confirm them. Finally, it's important for citations. Well-managed data is easier to share and thus to cite. So if you create a data set and you want other scholars to work with it, your research data management can help you provide that data set for others. And there are important things to consider when it comes to research data management. And the first one is policies. And this can come from your department, this can come from your institution, or this can come from your grant. Again, if you're spending someone else's money, they're going to have thoughts about how you do your research, where you store it, and where you share it. You also need to consider the type of data you are working with. What is the kind of data? What is the format is it's in? Is it physical? Is it digital? What are the file types if they're physical? Do they need to interconnect? 
Are the file types you're using proprietary? All of this matters in determining what to do within your research data management plan. What is the quantity of data we are working with? Are we talking a few megabytes, gigabytes, or hundreds of terabytes of data? Then you want to think about the history of your entire project. You know, do you need to track changes for things as they work? If you've got data, do you need to consider version control of your files so you can see what's happening? You also need to think about metadata, and this is data about your data. So what do you need? What do you need to keep? What do you need to preserve? You also want to think about privacy and consent. In terms of your research project, does it need to be a dark archive where only you and your other research team members have access? Or is it something that is required by law to be open and accessible to everyone? You also need to think of the permissions you give your research team. You know, is it, you know, just you and a couple of members have full access? Is it you have full access and someone else has a lower level of access? These things are important. And then within the data itself, do you need to consider privacy within the data of the scope of your project. So if you were interviewing people, do you need to de-identify that information? Does that information of a person you've interviewed need to be separate from the interview contents themselves? These are all important things. You also need to consider intellectual property and security. What do you own versus what is shared? Do you need passwords or a series of passwords? Again, a lot of this is going to be based on what is required of your project from a grantee or a funder. What is the budget that you have to work with? The more data you have, the more expensive it is to wrangle, and you need to know that from the start. In sharing and dissemination, is this just for you and a department or a research team, or is it for everyone and it is open? Where is everyone located? You know, if everyone's in one university, that's going to be easier than if you've got a team spread across the globe. Do you need different levels of access? Again, what you're working with determines all of these things, and that's why it's important to go into your project with a data management plan. This may be required as a part of a grant proposal. So when you are putting in your grant information, see if a research data management plan is a part of that initial application process. Even if it's not, having a research data management plan is a best practice. And the parts of a plan are going to change, again, to based, on, based on your area of study and research. But typical parts of a plan include the types of data collected, the format that data is in, the metadata standards and extent, i.e. how much metadata, what kind of metadata you're collecting, any plans you have on sharing that data and any policies required around it, your plans for the privacy of that data, and again, any policies around that. What levels of access do you, your team, and the public need? What are the archival and preservation standards or methods you're going to follow? And again, what are your processes and workflows going through this research project? Now, there is a tool out there designed to help you develop a data management plan, and it's simply called DMP tool. This is a paid tool. UDC does not have an institutional subscription yet, but it is something we can look into. So now we need to talk about the parts of research data management. So first is organizing data. You need to look at the formats. And at the start, you want to pick your file formats and stick with them. If you keep bouncing back and forth between file formats, you might get some incompatibilities or trouble opening files that have become outdated. You also want to look at file naming. Pick a convention and stick with it. Make an index, and this can be as simple as an Excel spreadsheet, where you list and describe the parts of your file names. You know, what does a date look like? What is, what is in that folder? Having an index like this makes it easier to see where all of your data is and how all of your files are named in one go. You want to then look at repositories. Keep materials in appropriate centralized repositories. And you want to have one repository for your project, if at all possible. Having one spot for one project makes it easier for you to work, easier you to develop ways to share your research, and easier ways to keep that research accessible for the long term. 
And then you also want to think about the upkeep of organizing your data. Build in time to review and collate, i.e. look at time to organize your data. Make sure you've got maybe one day a week or one day a month where you sit down and make sure, are my files all named correctly? Are they getting backed up? Are they being saved? If you build that into your planning, it makes it easier moving forward throughout your project. Next, you want to think about metadata, and this is incredibly subject specific. So again, we're only going to talk in generalities here, but you want to start out right. Do the legwork early because it will save you time in the long run. Have a data index describing what everything means and why you are tracking it. And then describe the, you know, the metadata you're going to track, describe the metadata you need. So the who, what, where, when, why, how, what file system do you need? What format are things in? How long do things need to be? Go into it having an index so that when you create new project items, you can easily create the metadata with them either by yourself or having them automated. And then you want to think about the rights and usage. What tools do you need to view and open these materials? Are they shared? Are they proprietary? You know, are they specific to a repository? Are they specific to uh, the tool made to create that data itself? These are important things to remember. And then you want to show the connections between objects. Within metadata, it is often possible for you to actually link specific items to another item. And so this is important to know from the get-go so that as you are working on your project, you create metadata as you go. Next, you want to think about storage and preservation. So when it comes to research, more often than not, you need to keep these materials in a secure location. This can be physical or digital, but more often than not these days, it is digital. This is often required and it is a best practice. So you need to think about things like passwords, two-factor authentication, do you need thumbprint access? All of this matters before you go into doing your research project. And then in libraries, we like to talk about boxies, which is the thing of lots of copies keeps stuff safe. You want to back up your material. You want it in different places geographically. These days, so many things are uh, shared through Amazon Web Services. So you may think you're going to different backup platforms, but guess what? They're probably all serviced by Amazon Web Service. And so when you're developing your backup program, and ideally you will have three backup locations, you want to make sure they're not all backing up to the same cloud system like Amazon. And you also want to consider having a hard disk copy that you update regularly and keep in a secure firebox. And again, security and preservation is going to depend on your type of research. But these are things you want to consider going in. And finally, you want to consider validation and checking systems. Do your files still work over time? You don't want to be doing all this research and three years later, try to go back to original file and realize you can't open it up anymore. And there are tools that help you do this automatically. Next, you want to consider research documentation. And these are a running document or documents on what you are doing and why. Make one folder and use it often. Having research documentation provides context to your research project. It also can provide general project information and serve as a running history. Documents like this can also serve as a brain dump. In research, we also have these moments of clarity where we're like, aha, and you want to write that down in a central location so everything's not scattered all over the place. If you do have things scattered all over your place, take time once a week or so to sit down and put it all in a centralized location. And this is the importance of having a research journal or a blog. Keep it open and have it open as you work so you can jot notes. Only have one. If you have more than one, again, make it a routine to sit down with collate and archive that information. You also want to consider the sustainability of your research data management. Pick what works for you, digital or physical or a mix of both. When it comes to upkeep, do you want to do it daily, weekly, monthly, or whatever works for you? The best plan is the one that you can keep up with and the one that you are consistent with. Whenever you can automate, you know, have stuff auto populate as you go and also build in time for data cleanup. Data is always dirty. And so you want to build in time to clean it as you go instead of having to sit down at the end of a massive research binge and realizing you have all of this data and now you need to sit down and clean it up. 
you also want to consider, particularly when working with commercial vendors, will it last? Pick reliable vendors and consider what you would do if they shut down. You also want to consider policies and procedures, particularly if you have a grant funded study. There is OSTP guidance available to help you do this, and that will be shared in the handout sent after this session. You might also have grant requirements for how you handle your research data. So make sure you read those thoroughly and find a way to make sure that you are following them. And then you might also have simple departmental procedures, like do you need to submit reports at the end of the month? Simple things like that. Make sure you build it into your calendar so that you are doing it in the time you are supposed to do it. And there are many tools out there to help you with research data management. And the first one we want to consider is file sharing. And there are more programs for file sharing than could possibly be listed on the sign. You know, the big ones we think about are OneDrive, which we have here at UDC. Google Drive is another popular one because of how easily shared materials are. There's also Dropbox, which is a simple file sharing program, and Evernote, which is a file sharing program with built-in project management tools. We also have tools for data collection, and a couple of the ones I want to point out are electronic lab notebooks, specifically Lab Archives and Lab Guru. Now, these are paid platforms, but they are a way to organize scientific information in a way that makes it more easily understandable when you're doing massive amounts of research. And then you also have survey software. Here at UDC, we have Qualtrics. Another big one is REDCap. And there are a myriad of other software platforms out there. But when it comes to data collection, something that automatically makes the metadata, makes it shareable, makes the files easily saved, those are important things to consider. You also want to look at repositories. And this is going to vary by discipline, and there is likely one already out there for you. And there are three main levels of repository. There are repositories. There are commercial vendors where you pay to deposit your material. There are open vendors, and these are often required now under grants where you share your data and it's open out there for anyone else to see, sometimes after an embargo period, sometimes freely. And then there are also government repositories. And this, what one you decide you need may come from your grant funding and it may come from the OSTP guidance I recommended earlier. One of the big data repositories available right now is ICPSR, and this is from the University of Michigan. It is one of the biggest data depositories out there. Another place you can look to consider finding data depositories is R3 Data. It is a register of research data repositories that you can search based on subject matter, geographic location, and things like that. Then when it comes to doing some of the nitty gritty work of uh, research to hit or research, you have the data analysis tools. And again, this is highly discipline specific. So you need to consider what kind of analysis you are doing. Is it descriptive and qualitative? Is it diagnostic? Is it predictive? Is it prescriptive? What you are doing is going to help inform what tools you need. A couple of the tools you want to recommend for qualitative data is deduce. This can help you with coding and, you know, see how codes overlap, see themes within your qualitative data. This is a great one for transcripts. I am myself been using this platform for a current research project of my own. This is lower cost, but the cost of it scales with how big your project is. One of the big commercial vendors in this area is NinVivo. The UDC library Library is working on acquiring this, and we hope to make it available to the university soon. When it comes to uh, quantitative data, some of the big three are Power BI, that is from Microsoft. There is Google Data Studio, which is a freemium service, and there is Zoho. There's also a ton of other data analysis tools out there, and a link to look at those will be shared in the handout. Then we want to look at citation management, because when we do research data, we are reading a lot of studies done before our own research, and things can get unwieldy. And a citation manager is a place to save all the things you are reading, and oftentimes you're allowed to add your own notes and share them with others. The big one we want to share is Zotero. 
This is a free service. Most librarians here on our team use this. You only pay if you want to store lots of full text documents. There is no limit to citations. We have done a complete webinar on this, and you can see that on our YouTube page. Two other services that are paid are EndNote and Mendeley. They do the same functionality, but they're just not as open as, and as easily accessible as Zotero. And if you want to learn more about this, there is a ton about research data management elsewhere. I would like to direct you to these resources. And again, these will be in the handout. One is from the University of Pittsburgh. They have a massive guide on research data management. The National um, Library of Medicine offers uh, on-demand training in this area. Or Sarah has pre-recorded training tutorials. Princeton has a list of resources in this area. And then there is a PDF. Again, this will be sent within the handout uh, to help you select a repository for data deposit. So this concludes our webinar today. Again, if you have any questions about this, research data management in general, or anything else, please don't hesitate to contact us at the library, either through email, online chat, via appointments in person and online or stop by the reference desk. And now we will have time for questions. And again, we will share this recording later this afternoon and the recording and the handout will be sent to all registrants. Thank you.